Hello, dear ones. Tonight, we invite you to relax and settle down for a comforting tale that promises to ease your mind and soothe your soul. Picture yourselves in a cozy sanctuary, where every word we share gently lulls you into a state of deep relaxation. As the serene sounds of nature play in the background, let go of all worries and prepare for a night of restful sleep. So, let the tale begin. The Dark Story of Medieval Cats Chapter 1 The Enchanted Forest In the heart of a bewitched forest, there lay a small ancient village named Ebonwood. Shrouded in mist and shadow, the village was safeguarded by a band of black cats unlike any others. These cats, sleek and midnight-hued, possessed a mystical aura. By day they prowled the cobblestone streets and thatched rooftops, appearing as ordinary felines, but as the sun dipped below the horizon, they transformed into ethereal beings cloaked in shadows and starlight. They prowled the village, driving away malevolent spirits and keeping the inhabitants safe from the dark forces lurking in the forest's depths. However, a sinister curse had begun to encroach upon Ebonwood, casting a pall over the village and its magical protectors. The once vibrant and protective magic of the black cats was fading, and a chilling sense of doom pervaded the air. The villagers, desperate and fearful, turned to an ancient legend that spoke of the source of the cat's magic, a hidden enchanted relic deep within the forest. Alaric, a stoic warrior with a heart of gold and a mysterious past, and Ilara, a cunning sorcerer with a sharp mind and a voracious need for knowledge, are the two adventurers who knew this legend. The village elders beseeched them to venture into the heart of the forest, find the source of the cat's magic, and lift the curse threatening to consume their home. As Alaric and Alara embarked on their journey, the forest seemed to come alive with eerie whispers and rustling leaves. The path ahead was obscured by thick fog, and the gnarled trees loomed like silent sentinels. Strange symbols etched into the bark glowed faintly, casting an otherworldly light on the trail. Every step they took was fraught with an eerie sense of foreboding, as if unseen eyes watched their every move. Their first trial came as they stumbled upon a glade filled with ancient twisted trees. The branches intertwined above them, creating a dense canopy that blocked out the sky. As they ventured deeper, the trees began to speak, their voices a haunting chorus. Turn back, they whispered, for the shadows here do not forgive. But the adventurers pressed on, their resolve unwavering. The air grew colder, and the whispers grew louder, more insistent. The trees, sensing their determination, decided to test their worth. From the shadows emerged spectral wolves, their eyes glowing with an eerie, otherworldly light. The wolves circled Alaric and Ilara, growling menacingly. Alaric drew his sword, its blade gleaming in the dim light, while Ilara prepared a spell, her hands crackling with magical energy. The conflict was intense. Though Alaric was an unparalleled swordsman, the wolves would not give up. Elara cast spells that lit up the gloomy glade, sending the spectral animals reeling with each spell. 
The howls of the wolves resounded throughout the forest, as if they were multiplying in spite of their best attempts. The sound of steel hitting steel and magic crackling filled the air, a battle symphony set against the spooky, whispering trees. Just when it seemed the adventurers would be overwhelmed, Ilara recalled an ancient incantation. Chanting the words, she conjured a ring of fire, its flames burning with a bright, purifying light. The wolves hesitated, their spectral forms wavering before vanishing into the darkness. The glade fell silent, the oppressive presence lifted by Alara's magic. Breathless and weary, Alaric and Ilara continued their journey, the glade now silent save for the crackling of the dying flames. They paused briefly to catch their breath, the adrenaline still coursing through their veins. The trial had been grueling, a stark reminder of the dangers that lay ahead. As they resumed their trek, the path grew even more treacherous. The fog thickened, swirling around them like a living entity. The forest seemed to close in, the trees leaning closer as if to eavesdrop on their whispered conversations. Every so often, they caught glimpses of movement in the periphery of their vision shadows that flitted just out of sight. The adventurers came upon a narrow ravine, its depths obscured by the thick fog. A rickety bridge spanned the gap, swaying ominously in the breeze. Alaric tested the first few steps cautiously, the wood creaking under his weight. Ilara followed, her senses heightened by the palpable danger. Halfway across the bridge, they heard a low growl from below. Looking down, they saw the ravine was filled with shadowy figures, their eyes glinting hungrily in the darkness. Alaric quickened his pace, urging Ilara to do the same. The bridge swayed dangerously, but they managed to reach the other side unscathed, the shadowy figures left behind. Chapter 2 The Luminous Beings The forest grew denser and darker, as Alaric and Ilara pressed on, the canopy above nearly blotting out the sky. The path before them was treacherous, and the air grew thicker with an almost tangible sense of foreboding. After hours of arduous trekking, they reached a clearing bathed in an eerie, luminescent glow. Tiny glowing creatures flitted about, their bodies emitting a soft blue light. These ethereal beings seemed curious but cautious. Observing the intruders with wide, inquisitive eyes that sparkled like distant stars, Hilara, ever the scholar, recognized them immediately. Fay lights, she whispered in awe. Ancient beings known for their wisdom and elusive nature, the fey lights were rarely seen by mortal eyes. She approached them with reverence, speaking softly in the old tongue of magic. Her voice, melodic and respectful, echoed through the clearing, blending with the soft hum of the fey lights. The creatures responded, their chiming voices filling the air like a celestial melody. They spoke of a blight afflicting the forest, a corruption that had seeped into the very essence of the land, weakening the magic of the black cats. The fey lights bound to the forest's well-being were suffering as well. They offered their guidance to Alaric and Ilara, but demanded a price. To prove their worthiness, the adventurers had to retrieve a sacred crystal from the depths of a nearby cave. 
a task fraught with peril. The crystal, they explained, was guarded by a powerful ancient guardian that had long protected it from unworthy hands. Determined to succeed, Alaric and Ilara agreed to the task. The fey lights led them to the mouth of a cavern, its entrance obscured by thick vines and moss. A sense of foreboding hung heavy in the air as they descended into the darkness, torches flickering feebly against the oppressive gloom. Inside the cave was a labyrinth of twisting passages and treacherous pitfalls. Strange bioluminescent fungi clung to the walls, casting an eerie greenish light. The deeper they ventured, the more oppressive the atmosphere became, as if the very air was thick with malice. The silence was punctuated only by the distant drip of water and the occasional skitter of unseen creatures. After navigating the winding passages for what felt like hours, they finally reached a vast subterranean chamber, its ceiling lost in shadow. In the center of the room, atop a pedestal of black stone, rested the sacred crystal, its surface shimmering with an inner light. Guarding it was a colossal serpentine creature, its scales dark as night and eyes glowing with an unnatural fire. The guardian awoke as they approached, its roar reverberating through the chamber. Alaric and Alara prepared for battle, knowing that this foe would test their limits. The serpent struck with lightning speed, its fangs bared and venom dripping. Alaric parried its attacks, his sword clashing against its scales with a sound like thunder. While Ilara cast spell after spell, her magic illuminating the dark chamber with brilliant flashes of light. The fight was brutal and exhausting. Alaric took several blows, the serpent's fangs grazing his armor and leaving deep gashes. Clara's magic began to wane, each spell taking a greater toll on her strength. Just when it seemed they might be defeated, Elara noticed a pattern in the serpent's movements. She observed the slight hesitation before each strike, the way it coiled and uncoiled with a rhythmic precision. With a spark of insight, she devised a plan, instructing Alaric to distract the beast while she prepared a final, powerful spell. With a mighty shout, Alaric charged the serpent, drawing its attention and enduring its relentless assault. He dodged and parried, each movement a desperate dance with death. Meanwhile, Elara focused all her remaining energy into a single devastating spell. Her hands glowed with a fierce white light as she chanted the incantation, her voice growing louder and more commanding. With a final, desperate incantation, she unleashed a torrent of magical energy, striking the serpent squarely in its chest. The creature let out a deafening roar before collapsing, its body dissolving into shadow and leaving behind only a faint, dark mist. The chamber filled with an eerie silence, the oppressive air lifting as the serpent's presence faded. Breathing heavily, the adventurers approached the pedestal. Alaric carefully retrieved the crystal, its surface cool and smooth to the touch. The chamber seemed to brighten slightly, the dark energy dissipating as they made their way back to the surface. The fey lights greeted them with chimes of approval, their glowing forms flickering with excitement. They guided Alaric and Ilara back to the clearing, their celestial melody filling the air once more. 
The sacred crystal, they explained, would help purify the corruption afflicting the cat's magic. Alaric and Alara thanked the Fey Lights, their hearts filled with hope. Yet they knew their journey was far from over. The source of the curse still lay hidden, and more trials awaited them in the dark depths of the forest. Chapter 3 The Cursed Grove The journey grew more arduous, as Alaric and Ilara ventured deeper into the forest. The trees became gnarled and twisted, their branches like skeletal fingers reaching out to ensnare them. The air grew colder, and an unnatural stillness settled around them. They had reached the cursed grove a place where the very essence of the forest seemed tainted by a malevolent presence. The grove was silent, save for the occasional rustle of leaves. As they advanced, they noticed strange dark flowers blooming amidst the undergrowth, their petals emitting a faint, ominous glow. Alara recognized them as nightshade blossoms, plants known for their potent dark magic. She warned Alaric to avoid touching them, for their poison was deadly and their magic even more dangerous. Navigating through the grove was a challenge, each step fraught with danger. Shadows seemed to move of their own accord, and whispers filled the air, speaking of despair and doom. The adventurers pressed on, their resolve unwavering despite the growing sense of dread. At the heart of the grove, they found an ancient stone altar, covered in dark runes that pulsed with a malevolent energy. Surrounding the altar were spectral figures, their forms flickering like candle flames, these were the spirits of those who had fallen victim to the curse, their souls trapped and tormented. The spirits turned their hollow eyes towards the intruders, and a chilling voice echoed through the grove. Why do you trespass upon this cursed ground? it demanded. Alaric and Ilara explained their quest, their voices steady despite the fear gnawing at their hearts. The spirits revealed that the altar was the source of the curse plaguing Ebonwood. Long ago, a powerful sorcerer had bound the spirits to the altar, using their anguish to fuel the dark magic that now threatened the village. To break the curse, the adventurers had to destroy the altar and release the spirits. However, the altar was protected by a powerful enchantment, one that could only be broken by a ritual requiring a rare mystical herb known as moonroot. The herb was said to grow in a hidden glade, guarded by an ancient, enchanted beast. Determined to lift the curse, Alaric and Ilara set off to find the moonroot. The journey to the hidden glade was perilous, the forest itself seeming to conspire against them. They faced numerous trials, from navigating treacherous swamps to battling fierce magical creatures. Each challenge tested their strength, wit, and resolve, but their determination never wavered. At last they reached the glade its entrance concealed by thick, thorny vines. Within they found a serene, moonlit clearing, the moonroot growing in abundance. The glade was guarded by a majestic, silver-furred stag, its eyes glowing with an ancient wisdom. The stag spoke, its voice resonant and calm. Only those pure of heart may take the moonroot it declared. Alaric and Ilara approached the stag with reverence, explaining their quest 
and the dire need to save their village. The stag studied them for a moment before nodding. You have shown courage and compassion, it said. Take what you need, but remember, the path ahead is fraught with darkness. With the moon root in hand, the adventurers returned to the cursed grove. As they approached the altar, the spirits gathered around them, their expressions a mixture of hope and sorrow. Elara prepared the ritual, combining the moon root with other ingredients to create a potent elixir. The ritual was intense, the air crackling with energy as Elara chanted the incantations. Alaric stood guard, his sword at the ready, as shadows began to writhe and twist around them. The spirits watched in silence, their fate hanging in the balance. Finally, with a burst of light, the altar shattered, the dark runes dissolving into nothingness. The spirits let out a collective sigh of relief, their forms growing brighter before fading away, freed from their torment. The grove seemed to lift, the oppressive air dissipating as the curse was broken. The dark flowers withered, their glow fading, and the twisted trees straightened slightly, as if a great weight had been lifted from their branches. The once malevolent atmosphere of the grove transformed into one of serene stillness. Alaric and Elara stood in silence, their hearts filled with a mixture of triumph and exhaustion. They had succeeded in their quest, but they knew their journey was not yet complete. The true source of the cat's magic still lay hidden, and they had to find it to ensure the safety of Ebonwood. As they prepared to leave the grove, the spirits' voices echoed one last time, offering words of gratitude and a warning. The heart of the forest holds the key, they whispered, but beware, for greater darkness lies ahead. With these final words, the spirits faded entirely, leaving the adventurers alone in the now peaceful grove. Chapter 4 The Hidden Sanctuary With the curse lifted, Alaric and Elara felt a renewed sense of hope as they continued their journey. The forest seemed less oppressive, and the path ahead was illuminated by a soft, otherworldly light. They followed the light, believing it to be a sign from the black cats, guiding them towards their final destination. They followed the trail to a remote area of the forest, where a secret sanctuary was revealed by the parting of the trees. A massive old tree with roots firmly planted in the ground and branches reaching toward the heavens stood in the middle of the church. A soft golden light glowed in the eyes of the black cats of Ebonwood, who gathered around the tree, which radiated a strong, peaceful energy. As Alaric and Ilara approached, the cats transformed into their magical forms, surrounding the adventurers with an aura of protection. From the shadows stepped an elderly woman, her eyes twinkling with wisdom. She introduced herself as the guardian of the sanctuary, the keeper of the black cat's magic. The guardian revealed that the source of the cat's magic was the heart of the forest, a powerful artifact hidden within the ancient tree. The artifact had been protected for centuries, but dark forces had begun to corrupt its energy, leading to the curse that had plagued Ebonwood. To cleanse the heart of the forest and restore the cat's magic, 
Alaric and Alara had to enter the trees in a sanctum and confront the malevolent force that had taken root there. The Guardian warned them that this final trial would be their greatest challenge yet, for the force within the tree was cunning and powerful. With determination in their hearts, the adventurers entered the ancient tree. Inside they found a vast, hollow chamber, its walls lined with glowing runes and ancient carvings. The air was thick with the sense of ancient power and foreboding. At the center of the chamber stood the heart of the forest, a crystalline orb pulsing with a dark, twisted energy. As they approached the orb, a shadowy figure materialized, its form shifting and flickering like smoke. The figure spoke with a voice dripping with malice, taunting the adventurers and vowing to destroy them. Alaric and Ilara prepared for battle, knowing that their foe was unlike any they had faced before. The shadowy figure attacked with a fury, its form shifting and changing, making it difficult to strike. Alaric's sword clashed against its shadowy tendrils, while Ilara's spells seemed to have little effect. The figure laughed, feeding off their frustration and fear. The battle was intense and relentless. Alaric's movements were swift and precise, each strike aimed to fend off the shadow's assault. Ilara, her brow furrowed in concentration, tried various spells, but the shadow seemed impervious to her magic. The air crackled with energy, and the chamber echoed with the sounds of clashing steel and mystical incantations. In the midst of the battle, Ilara had a realization. The figure was drawing power from the corrupted heart of the forest. To defeat it, they had to cleanse the artifact. She communicated her plan to Alaric, who nodded, understanding the gravity of their task. While Alaric kept the figure at bay, Ilara focused all her magical energy on the heart of the forest. She chanted ancient incantations, her voice rising above the din of the battle. The crystal began to glow, its dark energy slowly dissipating. The runes on the walls glowed brighter in response, adding their own power to her spell. Sensing its power waning, the shadowy figure grew desperate, its attacks becoming more frantic. Alaric fought with all his strength, his sword cutting through the tendrils of darkness. He took several blows, his armor dented and blood seeping from shallow wounds, but he remained steadfast. With a final, powerful spell, Ilara cleansed the heart of the forest. Her hands glowed with an intense light as she uttered the final words of the incantation. The crystal shone brilliantly, banishing the darkness that clung to it. The shadowy figure let out a howl of rage and pain as it began to dissolve, its form unraveling into nothingness. The chamber filled with a radiant light, the dark energy dissolving into nothingness. The heart of the forest pulsed with a pure, rejuvenating energy, and the oppressive atmosphere lifted. The runes on the walls dimmed to a soft glow, their power now at peace. Alaric and Ilara stood victorious, their mission complete. They took a moment to catch their breath, the weight of their journey settling on their shoulders. The sense of triumph was mingled with exhaustion, but they knew they had achieved something monumental. As they exited the ancient tree, 
they were greeted by the Guardian and the Black Cats, their eyes filled with gratitude. The Guardian thanked them for their bravery and sacrifice, assuring them that the magic of the Black Cats was now restored, and Ebonwood was safe once more. Halleric and Alara returned to the village, where they were hailed as heroes. The villagers celebrated their return, and the black cats resumed their nightly vigil, their magic stronger than ever. The adventurers knew that their journey had changed them, forging a bond that would last a lifetime. Heavenwood thrived, its people living in peace, protected by the magical guardians of the forest. The tale of Alaric and Alara's bravery became a legend, a story of hope and resilience that would be told for generations to come. And in the heart of the enchanted forest, the ancient tree stood tall, a testament to the enduring power of courage and friendship.